A very good early morning, everybody. How are you doing? We hope you are doing well. Welcome to a very uh, kind of raining off and on it had been. Uh, but uh, yeah, overcast. Uh, Edmonton International Airport. It is time for a shakedown flight. We got a couple of things going on. Uh, this is Act Plane 12.1.2 Release Candidate 3. This just came out about, uh, I want to say an hour ago or so. I'm recording this on uh, Thursday, October 3rd at uh, around 13.30 Zulu. Um, loaded up X-Plane, got a notification, new version. It simply addresses things with the boats and the ships and stuff like that. You also have the ability now, if you're VRAM constrained to that, you can actually turn, not just draw parked aircraft off, but you can turn the boats off completely as well. So uh, that's nice for people who have, uh, you know, uh, don't have a video card um, with a whole stink load of VRAM or a CPU that doesn't have a massive amount, you know, not a massive amount, but you know, a lot of cores. Definitely helps out. Uh, and we are in the SSG 747-800 International. You also get the freighter version. Uh, this is version that uh, just came out a little, uh, I don't know, a few weeks back, I guess. 2.8 Release Candidate 3. Um, for this flight, um, I do not have ortho running. I do have sim heaven running and extended night lighting. And I am using active sky instead of X enviro. Um, I don't want anything beta, uh, running other, well, other than the sim, which is a release candidate. So release candidate aircraft, release candidate, um, X plane. Uh, this, uh, was what this has been a favorite aircraft of mine since back in the early early x-plane 11 days will it still be my fa one of my favorites uh we will see um last time i flew this we were on version 2.7 uh beta 3 or beta 1 uh i believe so will i still like it we'll find out uh, again, we're agenda free on this channel. Uh, all planes and stuff like that are bought with view, you know, uh, my own money and viewer donations. If you'd like to help contribute to that, link is down below. Click show more. It's a one-time thing. You'll also find uh, where you can get most of the add-ons that I use routinely, and as well as, of course, a link to my Discord and my computer specs. I am glad to have you on board. I'm going to get set up. We're taking off runway 20, my usual shakedown flight to Vancouver International. I want to thank you for flying along with me. And here we go, folks. Uh, the recording software kind of messed up. Uh, so uh, I'm still hand flying it, actually. Seems to be going fine. And now I will get on that. Plop to clean. Mixed bag kind of day, I want to say. But at least we got a breakout good and early, which is good. Oh, yeah. So. That's all good there. This has automatic de-icing anyways. As you can see, they're all in auto. And we'll get the runway turn off lights off. How are we doing? We're at 11,000. We can get the landing lights off. Uh, 
I think we're good. Um, so other things, um, a lot of the things that I, I'd like, I nitpick with this aircraft is, one, it is almost a $60 aircraft, U.S., okay? And considering they haven't really added much functionality over the years at all to this, you know, like, look at this. What is this? X-Plane 9? You know, um, the cabin, eh, yeah, like there's no light, like, now you can get custom interiors for the aircraft around the X-Plane forums and that, but, you know, it's just, it's, it's frustrating because, um, Especially in X Plane 11, but uh, back when X Plane 12 was um, pretty much just staying at like 12.09 for what you know for that stretch there, this thing flew beautifully. I did a live stream 14 hours, I think it was, flew from San Francisco to I believe it was Hong Kong. I made dinner during the live stream. I went to, took a nap in uh, on the couch for about three, four hours and then came back. And the aircraft was working and flew perfectly. And then it just, it was awesome. Uh, you also get the cargo variant, which I really like. I love doing, uh, I, I was loving doing Atlas Air cargo flights from like uh, Haneda uh, to Anchorage uh, you know uh, or sometimes they put on an Alaska air cargo you get both variants so there's like a lot to also like for it you can get ground handling deluxe sets for this uh, with the freighter version um, you know, you get the front nose loader. The nose does open up and lift up into the air. And everything, you know, like... It has things that are going for it. If you we'll go outside, shall we? It's got things that are going for it. And it's a true long-haul passenger or cargo aircraft. And it was one of the only ones that was in X-Plane 12. Um, I don't have an issue with it, but you've got the A340 from Jar Design. I fly it perfectly fine. Uh, others seem to have, you know, but... They expect too much out of it. They expect a $35 aircraft to fly like a $120 Tolis. You know, you can't do that. It's not right. If you fly it within its means, it flies perfectly fine. This is not a PMDG. It does not have the immersion. But it doesn't cost what a PMDG does. Which, a, you know... Back in the day, it was close to $200 I paid back in FSX for the PMDG to get the different variants and that. $200 US. You know, I mean, but I mean, it was a magnificent aircraft. Uh, in my humble opinion, it was the best aircraft in FS9 FSX. Yeah, you all can get up. Huh? You know, there's no CP DLC. There's no A cars. There's no weather downlink or and company message or yeah, like. And it's been like this since this aircraft released. It's like they haven't really added anything. The weather radar, it's like here, but you can't push anything. It's like it's frustrating. They do the absolute bare minimum that they need to. 
Make sure it stays compatible with whatever version uh, changes happen in X-Plane. And that's it. I don't know if they're working on a new one or not. Uh, so, here's what we're going to do. Uh, as it is, you know, for the most part, kind of cloudy. And I'm not using ortho because I don't want anything interfering. Uh, I'm going to continue flying here uh, towards the foothills of the Rockies. And that, and uh, I will bring you back uh, sort of mid-flight for about a one-minute update. Um, and, you know, give you a report. Hey, it leveled off perfectly fine. It flew perfectly fine uh, on the climb out. And that. And, um, or I'll come back and say, look, let's have a talk. I've had some serious issues. You know, hopefully not. So that's what I'll do, and I'll bring you back, uh, I don't know, around 20,000 feet or something like that. And we will go and land on runway 26 left at Vancouver International. Don't forget, like, share, comments, you know the whole routine. Click show more uh, down below when you're doing all that stuff. Greatly appreciate it uh, if you click all that stuff. And do click show more. You will find my computer specs, a link to my Discord. It's completely free to join. And uh, you'll also find a way you can help support the channel so we can keep acquiring new stuff because we do not accept sponsored uh, content of any type. I've actually turned down two uh, in the time that I've had uh, the channel. And uh, you'll also find links to a lot of the stuff that I'm using, like where you can get this aircraft. Ortho, if I was using it, uh, how, where you can get X and Viral, Active Sky, stuff like that. They'll all be linked down there as well. I'll see you uh, sort of uh, probably just this side of Merritt, British Columbia. Uh, and we'll be uh, beginning our descent down into Vancouver International. Thank you for flying along with me. Uh, it doesn't look all that bad, huh? I have to say, I like the clouds in uh, X and Viro better than in Active Scott, because this uses the default X Plane Float. They're not horrible, but X and Viro for the win. Hey everyone, little brief mid flight report. Everything has been going perfectly fine. Uh, we're about 80 miles from top of drop. Uh, I thought I'd give you a mid-flight update. As you can see, kind of getting clearer as we head towards the coast, so it's not looking too shabby. And uh, the aircraft is performing perfectly fine at this point. So we'll see how she does on top of descent, and I'll bring you back around 20,000 feet, give or take. And I'll inform you if I had any issues with it. Activating the top of drop or anything like that. Thanks for flying along with me. And welcome back, everyone. We just passed Merritt. We've already started our uh, descent into Vancouver International. Uh, it uh, picked up uh, top of descent perfectly fine, started um, descending. One thing I would like to see the aircraft do about two nautical miles out it starts slowly spooling the, these back in anticipation of uh, doing the drop. Um, I could say that about a lot of aircraft, though. Um, uh, Add-ons. You know, to, to get to top of drop and then all of a sudden the aircraft starts dropping to match the V-Dev. And the engines are spooling back so slowly. You know, you start to gain so much speed um, to try and stay on the vertical deviation. Um, so I would like to see uh, add-on, uh, you know, aircraft uh, developers start anticipating this well ahead of time so that you're spooling back to half power or whatever you know by the time you're I don't know 
an, uh, half a no, half a nautical mile away, they're at like fifty percent, and they just keep reducing in anticipation of the nose going to drop. Uh, but other than that, it worked perfectly fine. Uh, as you can see, there we are. Lap time so far about 54 minutes. This is uh, different because the clock I started. This starts when you basically chocks off and pushing back. Uh, if I recall. And it, it's coming down nicely. Uh, one nice feature that Active Sky has. I'm going to show it to you right now. Charlie, Yankee, Victor, Romeo, airport information, November, one, four, zero, zero, Zulu, weather, wind, calm, visibility, one, zero, sky clear, temperature, four, two point, four, altimeter, three, zero, one, nine, advise on initial contact, you have information, November, three, zero, one, nine, Charlie, and you can also get it, uh, the en route flight data, uh, while you're, uh, during flight, uh, by tuning a different frequency, and if you tune uh, one two two decimal zero zero, you get your origin airport or the closest airport that has a weather reporting station uh, when you're on the ground at uh, your origin airport. And you can get the uh, the METAR uh, read to you, uh, which uh, always is kind of handy. Um, which is one thing I do like about Active Sky. It's a cool feature. I don't know if uh, X and Viro could ever implement that or not. I'm not sure. Um, if they could, that'd be really cool. Uh, one thing I did do, and I do this on a lot of flights. Um, I get rid of this, all this uh, or above or below. It's like, no, 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 no. If it's 12,000, okay, or above, I want to be at 12,000. I also altered some of the speeds, and that is simply because this bird has a lot of inertia, a lot of weight, and it, for a big aircraft, is actually kind of slippery. And it does not give up speed willingly doesn't like giving up altitude either. Let's go outside. Ah. Early morning, sunrise. We are on live time now. And uh, not just live weather. Uh, looking out my window. Uh, I live out in the valley. Sort of out this way. A little further in, more over there. Kind of thing. Um... This is pretty much what it's like. There's the odd cloud and that, but for the most part, it's a clear sky. Again, I am recording this on Thursday, the 3rd of October, and uh, this is the SSG 747, uh, new version uh, 2.8 release candidate 3 I am also using a new version of X-Plane that came out around 5 a.m. this morning uh, Pacific uh, Daylight Time uh, which is 12.1.2 release candidate 3 um, it's simply do, here can I do this hopefully it doesn't mess it up it allows you to remove the boats if you want. If you want to save yourself some frame rate, I'm going to tell you right now. Turn off 3D vegetation. I don't think it looks very good to start with. Uh, draw boats, draw parked aircraft. And that will uh, save you some frames. You know, if your CPU's a little bit, uh, you know, really loaded or low on VRAM. Why draw things that don't really, you know... I know the airport looks empty, but, you know... The stuff doesn't move anyways. You know, it'd be different if it was like... You know, 
what you see in like Microsoft and stuff like that. You know, where you've got live traffic flying overhead and all this. Now you can get that. You know, just uh, just planes or whatever makes one. Just sim, whatever it is called. You know, but it's like sixty bucks. I'm not paying sixty dollars to add traffic to my sim. Okay. You dumb plum lost your mind. Get over yourself. Um, there's also world traffic. There's a couple of freeware ones in that, but really, Laminar should add some default of its own, in all honesty. You know, uh, it's like, I, I'm sorry. You know, when Microsoft dropped the uh, FS 2020, the rules of the game changed. In that instance, what is anticipated and looked for in a simulator changed. I can live with this, like I said, I don't have the ortho running. I can live with this. That, that's not like it's not making me want to stick pens in my eyes you know but adding the ships was a nice uh, gesture the fact the cars in the sim and the trucks and that and we have trains which for the longest time Microsoft didn't have any trains it didn't really have any ships unless you l used We Love VFR or Global Global Shipping AI. Oh, come on. That'll mess you up. And we'll anticipate that, not that. Okay, everybody in your seat. Here we go. Everything else up top is looking good. Auto brake 3 is set. We're doing flaps 30, about 139, 140 for the VREF. Uh, I am going to have this do an auto land, and we will see how it does. Um, the reason why is because if uh, you're like me, and, uh, you know, if this flight goes well, I, I'm probably going to let this thing fly overnight tonight. And I'm going to fly. Like from Toronto to Tokyo. You know? And I'm just going to let it fly overnight. And that. And then I may make the weather really horrible. Where I've got absolute, like I'm just at minimums. If I've got, like, almost 400 people on board, plus cargo and that, I'm going to tell the plane auto land, and I need to have faith that it can actually do it. Because you never know what's going to happen during your flight. Even if you don't do one that extreme, like for 14 hours, I'll be sleeping through most of it, so I won't be obviously on fat soon. But here we go. Uh, like I said, another tip. Uh, Flying Scotsman taught me this. Um, slow down earlier than anticipated. Because uh, this aircraft does not like to give up speed whatsoever. And limit your bank angle. Do not leave it into auto. It will overcorrect and then it will make the turn and it will come like over to here and then it got to go back and it's swear I swear it happens even on the triple seven a lot of times uh, on the a340 that I have it's like it just like sits fooling and farting around for like the next thing you know you're like four miles from touchdown you know, and it's like, finally, grab the localizer. 
uh, you know, properly and glide slope and all that. And then you're mucking around with all this kind of, it's like, save yourself the headache. You can always adjust it and make it go a bit quicker. You know, a harder turn, if need be. Other than that, it has gone fine. And it is, uh, whoa, I really... Speed brake for the win. And this is what happens. I get going outside and I forget stuff. Oh, this was not planned. Can I slow down in, uh, what have I got? Two and a half miles. To there, and then I've got another... Oh, we should be fine. Then there's another five. Here we are. Well, at least we're below uh, 250. My bad. See, I get talking and showing other stuff, and I go on outside and that, and then all heck breaks loose. And we'll start to get a little bit of flap soon. And I'm slowly pulling the uh, speed brake out. Uh, what was my VRAF? 139. One seventy nine flaps five. Perfect. That's just alerting me that I'm within a thousand feet of the altitude. There is the glide slope. As you can see, we're sixteen miles out. So far, so good. Other than me like not paying attention to the speed. That's on me. You can't fault the aircraft for that. Speed brake arm. <coughs> Excuse me. Still getting over the you-know-what. Flop stand. Wow, she's really banking. Are you going to straighten out for me? That looks like a 30 degree turn to me. Localizer. Under the glide slope, we can get it to approach. You are going to pull me over, right? There we go.
fit it up a little bit. I think I adjusted those speeds a little too much, if you will. Oh, uh, why are you doing that? Hey, break arm. Glide slope captured, localizer alive, land three. They are all on. Excellent. Be quiet. I think the gear come down too quick. It's another little note. I know they're big. I know they're heavy. Okay, I, I understand that. Ops 25. And let's see if she can do it. It's looking pretty good. We're on plan mode, right? Yep. By the way, with this aircraft at least, and like with the Zebo mod, uh, if you want to know what your frame rate is, just look at your tablet. We're getting 42, so that's not too shabby. I believe I'm in 1080p. Vancouver quite often hits frames. And that, I didn't know how it was going to react. So, uh, in flap 30, we'll get fully configured. Five miles out, that's good. And so far, she's doing fine. Just get the battery and uh, that online. So far, so good. Confirmed. Speed break armed. It's doing pretty well so far. Will it flare? At like, I, I don't know, 50 feet, something like that. 75. Look at that. That looks beautiful. That's courtesy of Sim Heaven. Trees reflecting in the uh, river. Five hundred. Awesome. Confirmed. Uh, you won't have to watch me park this or anything. Oh, is that just not a gorgeous sight? Let's take her over here. There's actually a park over here. You can uh, sit and watch the uh, aircraft land. Approaching minimums. Landing. 100. Wow. 50. 40. Pulling 30. Pulling nose up slightly. 20. 10. Reverse green. Whoa, 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 whoa. That, uh, don't blame the aircraft for the horrible uh, taxi uh, here, like a holding center line. That actually worked a heck of a lot better than I thought. That's manual braking. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, they loosey goosey. Reversers idles, reversers stowed. That went a lot better. Wow, why am I up so high? Come here. That went a lot better than I thought. I'm not going to lie. Let's 
still sounds like the engines are spooled up. That's kind of weird. I think the F mod could use a little work. Ah. Uh, overall thoughts. It worked really well. I'm actually really uh, happy. Oh, what a magnificent... Is, is there anything more beautiful? I don't think so. We will get those up. So, uh, I'll just uh, continue taxiing slightly here. Um, overall thoughts. Uh, I'm happy. Now, again, I've owned this aircraft for quite a number of years. <coughs> Should you buy it? Um, that is up to you. Uh, I'm agenda-free. I'm not here to sell you anything. I don't care if you buy it or not. I have always enjoyed flying it. I'm glad this flight went well. Uh, because now I can do some cargo ops. I've got a free day for most of today, so I, I think I'm going to do some cargo ops. I think I will load up Ortho. And I think I will load up my um, Axonos. Uh, not the greatest rendition. Of uh, Memphis. And do a FedEx flight. Uh, down to Memphis from here in Vancouver. Doing a cargo flight. Which always puts a smile on my face. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed this, folks. Uh, if you did, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell so you get notified when my videos go live. Um, links to everything I used, including my computer specs. The add-ons like X Enviro, where you can get this aircraft, etc., etc., etc. There is an X Plane 11 and 12 version of this, and you do get uh, also the cargo and this passenger version as well. Liveries are on the X Plane forums. You can look them up. Uh, there's a number of them. There's ground handling deluxe sets, which this does fully support as well on there for you. Uh, you'll also find a link to where you can get Active Sky and X Enviro and everything else. A link to my Discord and of course how you can help support the channel as we are agenda free. We do not accept sponsored content on the channel of any kind. Um, if a developer sent, wants to send me or any of the, anything uh, it's, I do not sign anything saying that I have to make a 30 minute video showcasing this, this, this. you're not going to tell me how to do the video or have any influence at all on what I have to say. Uh, so it's completely unsponsored. If they want to send it, that's up to them. And of course, if they do, you will know ahead of time. Like, uh, and I have done numerous times, um... Magnus uh, from xenviro.net and Threshold did give me a copy of xenviro uh, with no strings attached. He goes, uh, you're a content creator. Maybe you'll find this handy. You know, use it, don't use it. Play around with it. And that was it. Uh, if I never used it, he wouldn't have said a thing to me. Uh, that's how it should be with all uh, content creators, in my humble opinion. Um, not doing sponsored content. Uh, some streamers, I always feel like they're trying to... So I, it's like, why do I feel like I'm on the home shopping network? Or an infomercial. Uh, always trying to sell me something. Uh, I don't do that on this channel. Anyways, my name's David. It's been my pleasure to take you on a shakedown flight from Edmonton International to Vancouver International in the SSG 747-800 International. Until the next time, folks, I want you to stay safe, be kind to one another, 
keep the blue side up, and I will see you on the rails, on the road, and in the skies. Have a great rest of the week and weekend, everyone. Take care. Thanks for watching. God bless.